places to fill in our second semi-final to meet the likes of Mousetrap. Little pit squeaks left back to the shore. Spawn of Scutterer there. Wild thing as well. Can anyone control and beat that? And from the last heat, battling their way through. Exterminator 2 finally beating the seeded mighty Bayamoth. So let's have more purveyors of pumping, penetrating punishment. Stop. Gentlemen, please welcome the man with more enterprise than Captain Kirk, Ray Charles. You know, there's many unexplained phenomena in the world, like poltergeists. They're the ones who throw crockery across the room. In fact, I think I mounted one. Well, there's the Bermuda Triangle, the only place you can wear big, brightly coloured shorts and not look like an idiot. But most bizarre of all is Robot Wars. Why do so many people tune in to watch six remote-controlled wheelie things senselessly bash each other out? Maybe because it's blooming good fun. So, who's explaining all this week? As usual, Craig, the seeds kept apart. Agrobot 2, number 20 against newcomers, Shorepoint and Oblivion, and a very good machine, number 4 seeds, Panic Attack against Smidzy, back again, as our overkill GTI. They're now with Jules in the pits. Oh, but she's not in her brightly coloured Bermuda shorts. What a shame. In the pits, we have three ferocious-looking robots for the melee. Overkill, GTI, zooped up, two pneumatic flippers at the front there. It's ferocious. It's a wedge. It'll do what a wedge does, and it's bulletproof. Here we have another team. Sorry, mate, I didn't see you. That's the name of the team. Sorry, mate, I didn't see you. Uh, in leather, in keeping with the bikers. Now, they met on the internet, that's when they decided to build the robot. And uh, we have some gnashing, ferocious jaws at the front there, apparently. What's that made of? That's gas main. Um, we picked it when they're digging up the roads, so they don't want to put pickaxes through the pipes. We figured they wouldn't put pickaxes through the side of the robot. Well, let's hope not. How fast does it go? Oh, well, yesterday we did 70 miles an hour. 70 miles? On the motorway. Get out of here. And the panic attack team. I don't think we really even need to introduce them. We know exactly who they are. The winners of the second wars. An awesome robot, but did go out to Firestorm in the third, so potentially a grudge match there, we think. Uh, possibly, yeah. Um, we'll have to sort that one out. Um, our drive-in's a lot better now, so they can look out if we need Good! <laughs> well, let's get them through the melee first, and for one, the bell is tolling. Well, they've talked the talk, but can they walk the walk? Let the wars begin! Scene number four, panic attack. Don't panic! This is a sturdy machine protected by bulletproof fiberglass and at 18.6 kilos, the heaviest in the heat, no blades or knives, but forks, electrically powered, can raise hopes. <laughs> Champions of the second series, but in the third wars, they beat Axios, Toe Cutter and Exterminator and look good until Firestorm beat them in the semis. Hello, we're Team Panic Attack. My name's Kim Davis, this is my son Michael, and this is Christian, and this is our robot Panic Attack. We're back from the previous wars with a new chassis. We have uh, skirts to stop other robots getting underneath. We have our self-writing mechanism. We have our weapon, which is very powerful. We've done it before, and we're going to do it again. From Western Supermare, Overkill GTI Mark. Goes into overdrive with the power from caravan winch motors, protected with the same insulation used in race drivers' overalls, to the same specs as nuclear power stations and space travel. Get into orbit in Series 3? No, they didn't even get past the first round. 101 were too destructive for overkill. Now they're GTI, can they go one step further? My name's Lawrence. This is Laurie, and this is James, and this is overkill. In the last wars, we had a weapon which was uh, a petrol chainsaw. This year, we have a pneumatic rams, two off, which combined give seven and a half thousand newtons. This should be enough to throw another robot clean into the air. From Maidstone in Kent, Smitty. The name means, sorry mate, I didn't see you. The power from two motors, the wheels from go-karts, the jaw weapon is operated by a luxury car seat actuator, but in the last series they had radio signal problems. That meant they went out to Rattus Rattus. Despite looking good, promising, it was the end for Smitsy. Hi, I'm Mike from Team Ixian. This is 
Robin and Andy in his Smidsy. Upgraded from the last war, we've got titanium side panels instead of aluminium. We've lowered the gearing so it'll steer better. The jaw motor is powerful enough to lift another robot up while we're pushing along. We can run right way up or upside down. We've got spikes on the back to do extra damage. Called Smidsy, sorry mate, I didn't see you. If you're a biker or a cyclist, you'll know exactly what that means. Roboteers, stand by. Overkill, GTI, Laurie Burke with the fair hair and James Yule at the controls. Laurie's dad, Lawrence, watching on from the audience. Smidsy, the internet team there at the controls, Robin Bennett with the glasses and Panic Attack with Kim Davis. Very good driver and the two boys, Michael Davis, his son and Christian Bridge. Three, Young Christian actually won a competition to take part in the Panic Attack team and nudged there on Overkill immediately from the front lifting force. We've seen them before in the wars. Now on the attack of Over on Overkill again was uh, Smitsy and look at the damage caused here to the arena floor. A great shunt taken out. Please replace your dimmit, Overkill GTI. Trying to get back in favour with the judges on the attack on Panic Attack and also on Smitty. Don't forget, Smitty can run upside down. Panic Attack wedging Overkill against the side spike now. That's a good attack by Panic Attack. As I said before, Kim Davis is one of the most respected drivers in the wars. Here he is, nudging Smitty. Overkill still wedged on the arena wall. In comes Matilda. Overkill going nowhere at this moment in time. Lifted up by Panic Attack. Tremendously powerful, those forklifts. Overkill, a little bit fortunate to get away. Still alive, Smitty the meat in the sandwich there. And flicked over, that won't bother them. Overkill away from the flame pit, little lick of flame there, but uh, they're okay. Overkill, and don't forget, they are inflammable, they tell us. The motor's rewound with Teflon and Nomex insulation. Overkill trying to use its stream neck on the arena sidewall to get away. I'm not too sure if they can for all the insulation. They're stuck, aren't they? Panic attack, a little nudge. Down comes Overkill. We bit fortunate to get away there from the controls. The bearded Mike Reed looking out. This is Overkill onto the arena wall and dead metal coming in. And the saw, the circular saw blade comes down now onto Overkill GTI. Panic Carbonate and Steel Body at the moment withstanding that pressure. Smitsy pushes away. Panic Attack or Panic Attack, but they're simply reversing to come in with another slam on Smitsy. Panic Attack doing all the aggressive work here. If you had to pick the most troubled robot of these three, I'd go for Overkill. They're being pushed against the arena wall right now, down towards the CPZ, the corner patrol zone. Don't forget that's where the house robots live. You go in there, they can attack you. And that's Killalot nearly attacking Smitty again. Overkill, has one of those tyres been punctured? They seem rather lopsided. Get into the hard shoulder, boys. Call out one of the rescue services. I think you're going to need them. Panic attack. A bit of a tug of war with Smitty. They've been impressive so far with Robin Bennett, a computer can controller, computer programmer at those controls. Now this is Panic Attack, just away from Sergeant Bash, away from the arena wall, and that's the first time we've seen the uh, Smidsy Jaws operated, and it goes to the judges. Very close for all three teams. There they are, they'll deliberate. We'll count up the marks for style, control, damage and aggression. What clues have you got? Well, that's Overkill being slammed against the arena wall. Smidgey using the jaws very late on. Let me close, isn't it? Well, the judgment's in, and it's over and out for Overkill. Well, you lost to a pretty worthy opponent, did oh, you not? Oh, certainly did. The winner of the second wars. Yeah, very good team. You know, we couldn't lose one in there. Well, no, but it's still and, quite and gutting, though, isn't it? Well, there you go. The King's a great guy, and, you know, both good teams. But lovely kids. Are you gutted? Marginally gutted, yeah. I was hoping for better, but you know, they were a good team, good robot. You know. And any changes for next wars? Um, I haven't really talked about it yet. Well, I think you should be. You haven't got long. But These things take years to build. But it still works. <laughs> it didn't last year. Oh, but well, you've been a great team. We've enjoyed having you here. See you next wars. Thanks.
Rose had a sense though that it would be over and out for Overkill. Smitty and Panic Attack go through. Next up, Oblivion and Sore Point against number 20 seed, Agrobot. Ready to bust some moves in the melee, we have Agrobot. Powered by two wheelchair motors here. My favourite thing about it is the crossbow powered Zonka, which does that. Total penetration. It's cross. Moving on, we have Oblivion, totally oblivious to pain. Titanium, aerospace grade aluminium. It's pretty impressive. They've got a massive chopper. And uh, powered by two Sinclair C5 motors. Hope they have more luck than Sir Clive. And headed up by Steve here, our private investigator, who's the driver, but he should really be the tactician, don't you think? Well. <laughs> we have sore point, and it will be for some, because these here are just the wheels. The real damage is caused by the harpoon here. It splits and twists and there will be wailing in the arena. From Dorking and seeded number 20, Agrobot. Three brothers built this using steel aluminium alloy off a skip to electric wheelchair motors again and the secret weapon, the hydraulic Zonka, a crossbow which punches holes in anything. What's this capable of in the last wars? Defeating highly fancied Razor, an astonishing star. Razor thought they'd won, but they got stuck in the pirouette of delight. I'm Peter. This is Bob. This is John. We're the Leech Brothers. This is Agrobot 2, the product of nine months' hard work since the end of the last wars. It's got a lifting nose and a spike at the back end, which inflicts damage like 20 millimeter bullet holes. This is what we're here for, to do damage, serious damage to other robots. Nothing else but. From London, Oblivion. Built by two brothers at school, of titanium, dural and polycarbonate. The drive motors come from a C5, the armour from aerospace materials and the electric axe can send anything to Oblivion. Hi, we're Team Trinity and this is our robot Oblivion. It's, it's four-wheel drive as you can see and it's got two Sinclair C5 motors driving the rover. Our main weapon is this whopping big axe, which is powered by a seriously large motor. We're up to do some serious damage at that. So, what can I say? The house service better watch out. From Burnham on Crouch in Essex, Saw Point. The only new machine into the front line of Robot Wars in this heat wheelchair motor powered, made from mild steel and polycarbonate. The weapons are ramming spike, snow plow, and those Saw Point blades. Hello, my name's Steve, and this is my team member Damien, and this is our machine saw point. Controversial design, large 60 centimetre saw blades as uh, part of the weaponry. We've got a front impaling spike, and we've also got a rear ram. The whole machine works upside down as well, so if we get flipped over, basically it doesn't really affect us. Yeah, very mean machine. Robotiers, stand by. Thrash em, trash em, the message for Agrobot with the Leech brothers at the controls. That's Peter Leech at the left hand side and Saw Point with Stephen Thomas there on the right, Damien Smith on the left, and Oblivion 2 from Wellington in Surrey with the Belendron family. There's Dad Sapai on the right. Two, one. Oblivion 2 test their robot on the street. The neighbours have complained about the noise. Oblivion 2 under attack immediately from Sawpoint. Wonderful wheels, great creation. Oh, hey, a bit wobbly though. Oblivion 2 going nowhere. <laughs> Sawpoint. <laughs> what are they doing on those blades? They're all over the place. Reminds me of a chariot race in an old Hollywood matinee. Here they come between Agrobot and Oblivion. Great competitors, up and over, hurdle race. Super stuff, Sawpoint, I hope they go all the way. Agrobot on the attack, Sawpoint driving in on dead metal, that's Sergeant Bash, Oblivion 2. Seems to be immobilised right from the start here. The Belendron team, Surin and Tavarigan and Sapaya, their dad, a business stationer, and they're rather stationary, aren't they, Oblivion? This is Agrobot under pressure from Sawpoint, oh dear! Agrobot here against the circular saw blades. There's a little spike. Do you see that out of the front there of Agrobot? The captive crossbow hydraulic Zonka. But this is not what Oblivion 2 wants to see because Killalot has it at its 
mercy, flings, it discards it across the arena floor. They remember us right from the start, right from the very first crunch. What a shame for them, after so much work. And now Dead Metal comes in with a circular saw. Oh, look at that slicing through. And saw point from the wobbly start. Has pushed Agrobot 2 into CPZ. It's all over, of course, for Oblivion 2. A little bit tattered and tarnished. The house robots come in for their play. There's the pit. We know that's descended. And look at circular saws. Saw point weapons there on Agrobot. But Oblivion 2 down the pit any moment now. I wonder if they can retain their weaponry. This is Agrabot, a little nudge of the head. They know they're safe. The whole head is hydraulic. There's the axe of Oblivion 2, which never came into play, and they are sent to Oblivion 2. Built at Trinity School in Croydon and beaten by our own Trinity of House robots, the Belendron boys. Agrabot 2 looked convincing. Not too sure about those saw point boys, though. Oblivion obliterated. Agrobot and Sawpoint go through. Hard luck for the Oblivion team, but it's Agrobot 2 and Sawpoint who go through with Panic Attack and Smitty. The seeds kept apart in the next round. The attack meets Sawpoint and Agrobot 2. They're against Smitty. So luck wasn't on your side? No, unfortunately, um, when, we, when we hit Sawpoint, uh, the front of the robot got bent which meant that it lifted our wheels off the floor and we couldn't move. But what about some more ground clearance for the next walls? Um, yeah, it would be a good idea. It's just there's a really fine uh, tolerance because uh, you saw last year Chaos 2 won by flipping people over and so we thought we could overcome that this year by having a very low, low ground clearance, but it didn't work for us this year. You do need luck in Robot Wars. It's yeah. not all about tactics. Yeah. Obviously. Um, and our axe is working as well until um, Sawpoint managed to chop that off as well, as you can see here. Yeah, so, so you had you couldn't wouldn't you work from the transmitter. No, 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 no. What can I say? Nothing. <laughs> Back for more next war. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> well, for our surviving robots, it's time for some contemplation. But I want devastation. It's our pinball warrior tournament. <laughs> Great, time is getting short, only two robots to go to depose Gemini from the top of our leaderboard. 255 points, a mighty score though. But let's give our penultimate challenges a go. From Woking in Surrey, Invertebrat. A test of driver's skill, control, pace, lots of points to be gained around the arena floor. Veterans of Robot Wars in the past, the Invertebrat team. Five points for each barrel knocked over. That's the normal course for competing robots in the Pinball Warrior Challenge. A bit hesitant, so that's 15 points already gained. Then all around the arena you have target boards. Guarded by the house robots, there's Bash. If you can get that huge silver sphere into a pit, that's 25 points, but no one's done it yet. This isn't a great run so far from Invertebrat. Open those car doors, you'll get 25 points. They seem to be caught in two miles. So 25 points for the car doors, well done into the CPZ, back through the doors. Now you see that ramp, if you can get up and over the ramp with a successful run, you can get 20 points for crossing the bridge. 50 points there on the side of the arena wall. Matilda, a little nudge from behind. And 50 points gained. Now away towards, well, I thought they were going towards the multi-ball release there, top of your picture. Why did they veer away? Turning slowly. This is a very ponderous run. Cease. Too slow. Indecisive. Not enough points on the board, I'm afraid. Disappointing, that one. Right from the start, tentative nudge at the barrels, I thought. And, and where from here, then, boys? Well, the sphere, many robots get that down the pit. Yes, 25 points scored for the open car doors. Stuttering. They'll be disappointed. I make it rough tally, 95 points. We'll wait to see if that's confirmed. It won't alter the leaderboard at all. And it'll leave Gemini still on top. 255 points, 95 points confirmed for Invertebrat. Only kilohertz now to challenge those leaders. If you're all very, very good, we'll have more psychopathic pinball carnage soon. But right now, it's back to the wars. Greg, a reminder of our heat semi-finals here. Agrobot 2, the CD robot against Smitty and Panic Attack number 4 seeds against the newcomer Sawpoint. 
Kim, you've been here many times before, haven't you? I we'll have, yeah. <laughs> We've got a newcomer. Are you getting tense for the rest of the team? Because they're probably pretty calm. They've been here before, yes. haven't they? Yes. You're tense. Have you ever faced a robot like the one you're about to face before? No, it's really weird. It's got great big discs, uh, cutting discs for wheels, uh, a pointy thing on the front. It's going to be difficult. I don't know what to do with it yet. So. Well, they've apparently got about eight inch of ground clearance, but who knows what that means? Well, we go straight underneath it. And <laughs> I'm I... hoping to just chuck it out the arena if we can. Yeah. <laughs> and with those spikes, I think you're in with a pretty good chance. There's a lot more than eight inches there. Yeah. <laughs> Stephen, our tactician. Yes. Going into the arena now. Absolutely. What tactics can you have against panic attack? I think it's going to be panic, panic, and, and attack. <laughs> really. Panic, panic. <laughs> run away. <laughs> Uh, I have to say, his spikes look a little bit larger than your ground clearance. Yeah, yeah, but um, we'll run over them. And... Can you draw a straight forward, please? Thirty It's all happening. And there you go, there's Panic Attack waiting for you. I'm going to leave you to it, this is too intense. <laughs> Panic attack, winners of the second wars. There's Kim Davis, very experienced and sore point. Oh, Bossy Bridges in the pits there. Go on, boys, get out into the arena. Three, two, one, activate. Panic attack's tactics here, quite clear, I would imagine. Get in, get underneath, flip it up and over. But look at the power there of sore point and panic attack. Couldn't get it underneath the wedge first time. Can do with a second assault, though. Sword point on its side, and the prong is crumpled and bent by the attack of Panic Attack. Look at that. I think the prong on the wheel of Sword Point was dug into the arena surface, and Panic Attack has really bent and buckled it. Now onto the arena side wall. Sword Point up, up, heave ho. Here we go. Weep and woe. For sore point, surely. Kim Davis, but the dog with a bone, will not give up now. Sore point riding piggyback. They need to ride shotgun here and get back in on the assault. Panic attack very much under control here. They've glued themselves on to sore point. They will not let go now. There's Kim Davis at the controls. His son Michael from Shantanum Comprehensive looks on and Christian Bridge, the newcomer from King's School in Macclesfield, delighted because they know Sore Point, brave newcomers, have been beaten here. Sore Point, the smoke there from the arena. Man trap. It's a bot trap, of course, in Robot Wars. Sore Point, beaten, bruised, buckled. Love the invention, though, of Stephen Thomas, the communications engineer, and Damien Smith, who helped design the robot, uh, did the graphics for Sawpoint as well. This is dead metal, of course. A pincer movement from the house robots. They now know Sawpoint, Stephen Thomas, and Damien Smith. You belong to them. Dead metal on the right and kill a lot on the left. And sore point being tugged and twisted between the two. <laughs> there they go! Towards the pit! And doom and disaster! Well, no! Not for me for sore point, because they've been great fun. And I hope to see them back again in the future. Panic attack on the attack on Killalot! <laughs> and Killalot will remember that, Kim Davis, you can be sure. Sore point, of course, beating them out of it. Kim Davis! Michael and Christian go through. Kill a lot. That's a little glance at Panic Attack. And they can only watch on as the Welsh boys attack Shunt and the House Robots. Cease. In comes Bash. What are you doing, Panic Attack? You may smile. We'll be smiling on the other side of our faces. You wait and see. Well, Panic Attack are definitely back. Sword point in the pits. Panic Attack go through. <laughs> Why am I shaking? Why is he shaking your hand? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, it must be a sore point it's coming up against <laughs> the fourth seed and the next champion. Yeah, well, if you're going to lose to someone, I guess it's got to be to someone good, hasn't it? So he's... Uh, we, what 
the design of that robot? I mean, those saws, how, how, how hard are they? Well, they, they, they are extremely hard. Uh, in all the punishment, there's probably the only two bits I'll be able to salvage out of all of this. But, uh, yeah. yeah, as I said, it'll make the basis of the next design. So I will be back. And, you, uh, you did take a fair amount of punishment. I did take a very... I was convinced <laughs> you were going out of the arena. So <laughs> I think this gentleman was convinced I was going out of the he arena. Could, he couldn't pull it off, though, could he? he? Just couldn't do it. And he tried so hard. Yeah, so it was the pit of oblivion instead. It certainly was, yeah. We'll yeah, see you next time. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, sure. saw point. Yes! You naughty, naughty boys. <laughs> I mean, not only were you not content with wrecking that saw point, then you had to try and get kill a lot in the pit. Then you took on shunt. Now you remember, you remember, don't you? That kill a lot's got a long memory. He's got a memory like an elephant. Yeah. Oh. Why, why, he's a driver. It's not <laughs> I'll blame it on me dad. Um, I, I was convinced you were going to get him out of the arena. I, we really tried, but just couldn't get him out. So I tried about three times, I think it was, but he just wouldn't go over the top. He gave him a piggyback for ages as well. Yeah, I thought, well, do a lap of honour with him. <laughs> and then they opened the pit, so... You're getting very cocky, though. Getting very cocky, taking on Kill a Lot. You think he's going to forget about that? No, he's not going to forget. We can look out next round. <laughs> well, we've seeded you four. You know, I've always said to you that you know everyone's always un underestimated your robot, but, but we're not underestimating it now, are well, we? Well, perhaps it'll learn that way. Yeah. <laughs> Some difficult fights to come. I think so. Are you enjoying it? Yeah, it's just great. Are you confident? Not really, but as usual, we, you know, we'll see how we go. We'll give it a go. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Panic Attack! Point of packing up, ready to go home. Yeah. Now I might add that if you'd spent less time nosing into other people's business <laughs> and more looking into the opposition, you might have done better. Well, there is always that, but when you come up with a sort of unconventional design, you do tend to pay the price, and this was it. See, but uh, I think there's a winning concept here, deep down, and yeah, we sustained a lot of damage, and I think yeah, it's it's this way we can just build a new one and start again. Really. Oh, why not? They were a tough competition, there weren't they? Let's well, check out the damage they did to you. Starts really from the damage to the actual wheels themselves. Uh, they all had. A very good blow, it's all sort of front facial network, the lid, it's, it's all both. He got hold of you and basically sort of carried you Yeah, he was, he was just, yeah, I know, it was terrible. And you were the ones it? wailing oh, in that oh, arena, oh. weren't you? And yeah, and then the house robots done their little bit, and they sort of decided to chop the whole back end off, which was really nice of them. Because they can. Because they can, this is very true. I think I actually done very well considering the opposition. Good. <laughs> Good, you have. They were the number four seed. They were the number four seed, and um, yeah, as I said, I, I've enjoyed it. So I just think, yeah, I'll lick my wounds, learn by my mistakes, and uh, come and you'll back be back now. for I'll be back. more whaling. Yeah, we will see uh, Sword Point again. Again, definitely. We hope so. Oh, you will. Well done. Without a doubt. Glad to hear that. Sword Point will be back. Not in this program, though. Panic Attack going through to the heat final to meet either Smidzy or. Robot 2, number 20 seeds. This is going to be an interesting one because you're very evenly matched, aren't you? I think so, yeah. We, we, we look to be the same sort of robot. Mm. Same sort of sides, work both ways up. We'll see. But we're a nicer colour. You're a beautiful colour. Absolutely. So it comes down to power. Do you know what's inside theirs? What's inside theirs? I've only got four wheels, so we? Ours are bigger. Your wheels are bigger? Our wheels are bigger. Well, it's going to be power, isn't it? And it's going to be driving. Who's in control? He is. Down to me, yeah. On your head, I, I'm and, uh, walking home tonight, yeah. Let's just hope they don't see you coming. No. So they think they're going to wipe the floor with us? They said they're going to smash you and pound you, put you in the house robots, in the pit, flip you right out of the arena. Oh, that's OK, then. Just now, you're quite evenly matched, aren't you? Um, yes. You're slightly smaller. Yeah, we've got about the same sort of pushing power. We've got similar weapons. It's, it's going to be down to a bit of luck, driver skill. We'll see how it goes. Could go to the judges. Get in there and do your damnedest. Thank you. That's Smitzy, slightly the smaller, but the the two. There's Mike Reed on the right hand side, all smiles, and Agrobot too. Don't forget they have that hydraulic zonker. Bob on the right at the controls. And what's for sure, for the Leach brothers, it won't be a hair-raising experience, let's be honest about things. Agrobot 2 on the right-hand side. Now on the left of your picture, a Smitty comes in on the attack side by side. 
Smitty away from the flames. Whoa, a lick of flame to the top there, burning paint. And graphics charcoal effect now on the top of Smitty. Sorry, mate. Didn't see you there, says Agrobot as it turns away. Smitty with a little bit of a broadside on Agrobot. Smitty has the jaws operated by the car seat actuator. Agrobot 2 has the hydraulic zonka, the little punch, but it's at the other end of the machine as it comes in on the attack now with the lifting nose cone. Trying to get in underneath Smitty, that'll be difficult. It's got a one-inch adjustable ground clearance, Smitty. And they ram Agrobot 2 against the arena side. Well, don't forget Agrobot capable of beating Razor in the last wars. And Razor, a phenomenal machine. But it's Smitty here doing all the work. Mike Reed to the left-hand side. Robin Bennett's actually at the controls right now. Andy Pugh, the weapons operator. And it's Smitty here on top of this heat semi-final for me. Again, slamming in underneath Agrobot. Agrobot, the little piggyback coming down onto the arena floor over the flame pit in the end. So that's good style and control and aggression from Smitty. They're on top. Should this go to the judge? I'm sure of that. Although the judges are a lot brainier than I. They have all the university degrees. I can but read and write sometimes. Uh, this is Smitty now with a little slam on Agrobot again in towards the CBZ. The Agrobot boys trying to crane their neck and have a look at it. And Agrobot on fire, it seems, as the fire burnt itself out. In comes Sergeant Bash with the crumpling jaws. Agrobot finished here. The sweat on the brows of the Leeds brothers, Peter, Bob and John. And they know their dream has come to an end. They're on the floor, Flipper. Look at that carnage stuffing being ripped out of Agrobot, quite literally. And it's the end for Agrobot on the arena floor, Flipper. Just about nudged away by dead metal, but it's, it's tattered and torn, sliced, diced. No luck with the throw of the dice either for Agrobot today. What on earth is that sort of stuffing in there in the nose cone? Looks like foam rubber. Can't be, surely they wouldn't have stuffed that in there. It is, you know, I think. Well, they're out. Agrobot 2. Disappointing for them. But a very good performance, I thought, by Smitsy. Underrated machine these boys have. Well, Agrobot is an agro burger. Smidzi are through to the heat finals. Look. Only got beat a little bit. <laughs> what can I say, Em? Hi. I think Agrobot's got agrophobia now, because he's not going to be going out for a while, is he? <laughs> well, scratches. I think he needs a little bit of paintwork. Oh, I tell you, um, you took an awful lot of damage there, didn't you? Oh, well, it's not really a four, isn't it? True, true, true. You seem to take right. it in good spirits as well. Well, we have a few spirits when we're making it. That's why it don't go so well. <laughs> <laughs> nice to see you back again. Ladies and gentlemen, Agrobot! Smidzy. You expect to be like a little kitten or something like that. But there's nothing kittenish about that robot, isn't it? Oh, and it's the Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> it's, it's a battler, isn't it? It's a strong one, isn't it? And it keeps on going. Yeah. It pulverised him. Yeah, we, we thought it'd be really close and it was mm. down to driving. Robin was just stunning. We're just in and in and in. Excellent. Well, you, 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 you did have a lot of hand from the, from the house robots, though, because they lost drive and power, and then the house robots yeah, came in they, and they, they got them in the end, didn't they? They did the big damage. Yeah. I mean, look at that. Well, I wouldn't get too... And we got nicely char grilled. I wouldn't get too comfortable, because you're meeting panic attack in the next round. Yeah. We're very scared. <laughs> that is going to be a serious, serious battle. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. Ladies and gentlemen, hear it for Smidgey! Good team, good machine. Smitty through and the seeded Agrobot 2, they crash out. So the final of this heat, the very much fancied panic attack against the underrated Smitty. Be interesting, that's for sure. Well, we're sitting here relaxing with the panic attack team before they go into the arena. Um, did you think Saw Point were really top opposition for you? Uh, not really. Um... They weren't very fast. Uh, they were very vulnerable to attack, so they didn't have much of a weapon. So uh, We haven't seen you at your best yet, have we? Mm, possibly. <laughs> mm, 
Well, I think Smitsy were quite tough in the last battle. Oh, Smitsy's going to be a different kettle of fish altogether, I think. It's, if we pick him up and turn him over, he can still run. He's very small, so the forks will lift him up, but the, the, the wheels will still be able to run, so he's going to be very tough. Really? Yeah. Ooh, could this be the end for Bonagatai? Oh, no, it's not going to be the end. He's just oh. going to be tough to beat, that's all. All right, <laughs> but he's fully capable. Go team! Smidzy, the team from Cyberspace, seem to have the Panic Attack boys a little bit worried. Hard to say why, really. They're just very much similar design to us, only better. So why should they be worried? Oh, maybe they were just being modest then. Oh, they're the better drivers, and they've got the cute kids on their team, which is always an advantage in this game. Don't put yourselves down. Now is not the time. You need to pick yourselves up. You've got a great robot. We've got the better paint job this time. Well, we asked for medium rare. They've done us well done. <laughs> Well, look, go into the arena, do your damnedest, and I'm sure you'll get there. Thank you very Thank much. You. This is how they got to the final. Panic attack with Smidzy defeating Overkill. Then saw point, as we've just seen, very nearly out of the arena. Now, Smidzy were very impressive, direct in that attack on Overkill. And against Agrobot, what a performance this was. So we reach round three, two more robots extinguished, two more about to set the house on fire, fighting for a place in our series semi-finals. From Cumbran and seed number four, Panic Attack. Was there a nervousness about the number four seeds from Wales? Maidstone in Kent, Smidzy. There's certainly a confidence about these boys. Andy Pugh, we heard him speak a moment ago from Sheffield University. He's in the engineering department. Stand by. That's panic attack. With the front lifting forks, Kim Davis, his son Michael and Christian Bridge. And Smidzy. There on the right-hand side, Mike Reed. Andy in the middle, Robin Bennett on the left-hand side. He'll drive the machine. Two, one, activate. He once built inflatable helicopter blades, Robin Bennett. Yeah, we'll try and work that one out. This is Smidzy on the attack straight away against the number four seeds. They've got those new skirts down the side in this series to stop other robots getting in underneath panic attack. Improvements all the while from Kim Davis. Letting the fingers do the talking there very quickly. Smidzy up and over, but again direct. Aggressive. Panic Attack wants to draw Smidzy on towards an arena wall, I would suggest, so they can get in, flick him up, and over, and out. The moment Panic Attack just holding the arena centre, I think they're trying to draw Smidzy in here, Kim Davis. Now pushing towards the CPZ, there's Robin at the controls, the computer programmer. Again, driving at Panic Attack. Not even at the moment. Smidzy the more aggressive, perhaps Panic Attack the more controlled. Star control damage aggression. That's what the judges will mark on should it go to them. Will it go to them? Smitty away from panic attack. It's cagey stuff. Panic attack now in the grip. Oh, dead metal. That'll count against Kim Davis. Smitty nearly got themselves into trouble. They have a big fan club here. Look, Smitty, we haven't really seen the jaws work, have we, so far? But I do think they've done ever so well. They had radio signal problems in the last series. Better this time around. But now panic attack. Oh, aggressive and look. They've got the forks impaled in the wheel housing of Smitty. The wheels from go-karts, a little bit of a gap around them. And Panic Attack and Kim Davis have found that gap. And now that could be the single most decisive moment of this entire heat. Panic Attack saw the opportunity, wait for it. And poor old Smitty impaled and being dragged around the arena. And while they are dragged around, they are simply open for anything Panic Attack wants to do. The jaws open wide. You see, they're trying to get those jaws down to act as some sort of spring to right themselves. They've eventually got themselves clear anyway. I thought they had, but back comes Panic Attack. Maybe Smitty have been immobilised here. They're certainly being dragged towards the bin. I think they have been immobilised. Oh, they look so promising. Bus! The heat final belongs to Panic Attack and not to those Smidzy boys. The number four seeds have won it. Can our champions from the second wars go all the way again? 
Smitsy is smitten. Panic attack are through to the series semi finals. <laughs> Last time we talked, you were quite confident. Oh, we were never confident about beating Panic Attack. No. Well, you're a tenacious little robot. I mean, and you sort of matched it for power. However, you didn't have that little lifter. And it lifted yeah. you up and it carried you around. And the pits went open, so it just carried you around again. And then it put you down. And as soon as the pits opened, yeah. it picked you up again and see. threw you in the pits. Well, he's the granddad. He was winning them before we were thinking of building them. I mean, right. come on. You gotta, we're going to lose to anyone. We might just sort of lose to a previous winner. So, I mean, since you've been looking at the robots, have you spotted some des uh, design flaws that you think you can put right for the next wars? Um, bits and bobs. That's, that's up to him. Yeah. It's... The Duel's a really good weapon, but just far too slow. Yeah. It needs to be faster. It needs to be powerful. faster. Yeah. I, mean, I like the way they work. They do, they do nice, they do interesting things. Yeah. They got us off the barrier in early about really nicely. They're just too slow. Yeah, but we can get there. We can do that. That's, uh... You guys are from all over the country, aren't you? You kind of met on the internet. Yeah, we're yeah. from everywhere. Ken, Sorry, we, we had Yorkshire. We hadn't met before we decided to build the robot. We, and did we... you build it over the internet? I mean, were all the ideas exchanged over the internet and things? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. The ideas for it. We, you just talk, we did more talking than God knows what about what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then people build stuff, post it to Andy, and it all comes together. And, Works. <laughs> it was a phenomenal effort. It's what Robot Wars is all about. I hope you come back to the next wars. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for Smidgey! Yeah. Are you looking at all that for? Um, <laughs> I'm in awe. I'm in awe. I mean, that was easier than you thought it was going to be, wasn't it? Wasn't it wasn't really? easy at all. Are you um, sure? Yeah, it was very difficult to catch and actually. It, the only way we could get it is get it in the gap between the wheel and the bodywork, which we, we were lucky we did. But I mean, any well, other way, it it's twice, just... so I mean, that's not luck, is it? I mean, that's by design. <laughs> and what do you think of your dad's driving skills in that, then? I mean, the driving yeah. skills, they were brilliant, weren't they? I mean, your driving skills, I mean, you, you, you can, you're such a better driver now. Well, in the last war, it was virtually uncontrollable. I couldn't position it, but now we've put a gyro in it. It, it actually goes where I want it to go, so it, it's a lot better, yeah. Series semi-finals, you've been there before. Again. Yeah. <laughs> You're not nervous? No. What do you feel about being in the series semi-finals? It's exciting. Yeah. Uh -huh. You looking forward to it? Yes. Have you got a feeling that you might go all the way again this time? I don't know. You don't know? Fingers mm. crossed, eh? Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, the ex-champions, let's hear it for Panic Attack! If you're looking at TP, you'll find Indian scores wishing they had a telly to watch Robot Wars. Bye bye. <laughs>